power. A woman of faith that must have seen faith, no mountains. Um, Ms. Eisen, to me, was an example of a strong black woman because if she visionized something, she felt like it could come to pass. And one of her greatest visions was to see healthcare provided for the people in the South Dade area. I can hear Ms. Isa saying now, I'm tired of our people dying trying to get to Jackson Memorial Hospital. And that kept her going. Just the fact that she felt that something can change, that it had to be something done, and she felt like she could get it done. And she proved that. She was very outspoken, even though she didn't have that much education. And I tell you, she didn't drive, but she was always on time. She would find my mother, Miss Gertrude Mackey, Miriam Smith, uh, Willie Brown. They would pick her up and bring her to the, um, whether they was involved in voting, registering um, citizens to vote. Uh, whether they was involved with uh, meetings and stuff, they would always pick her up and bring her to the meetings. As we continue to mark Black History Month, we're focusing on a local visionary and trailblazer, the late Doris Eisen of Florida City. Eisen, dissatisfied with health care for African Americans, broke barriers in 1971 and created a health center in South Miami-Dade. What began as two trailers with volunteer doctors has morphed into Community Health Incorporated of South Florida. And Eisen accomplished all this was a third great education. What an inspiration living on today. I'm joined today by Doris Eisen's niece, Carolyn Taylor Pates, and the president and CEO of CHI South Florida, Brodus Hartley Jr. I tell you, this makes the whole month worth it for me because I'm so honored to share this story, to meet you, and you know, really the rippling effect of this, particularly in today's time where we're talking about healthcare is so important. First, tell me about you know the heart of this woman to see the need then and, and what it's meant for today. Basically, she was a very loving and giving woman. She loved God and she had a hunger and thirst for assisting everyone that she came in contact with. She went down basically in the Everglades and started with the migrant workers and then saw that so much was needed in health care. My goodness. Uh, and she must have been a rebel because oh, she yes. had to have a loud voice yes. to get attention to get care for, yes. for people. Absolutely. There were groups of uh, other women and men in, uh, down in Homestead that came out to assist. They would meet privately. Yes. And we as little children, you know, we would just sit. We could not intervene at all. But just knowing her thirst and hunger for assisting those, and mainly what she thought about was too many children are dying en route to Jackson Hospital because they could not go to the then James Archer uh, Hospital there in Homestead. Wow. That is unbelievable. And what's incredible is that that imprint grew and grew and really became a, su a successful venture that now is helping folks of all races, of all nationalities. Absolutely. I mean, that is really such a punctuation point. Universal access. Yes. What do you think the message of her life and legacy is? Service above self. I believe that is the message. And she wanted to help people regardless of their race, regardless of their, of their status, that she wanted to help people. Yes. Yeah, and that was it. And to have touched on such a critical issue that here we are today, desperate over in this country, trying to find fair ways, trying to get access for everybody. I mean, when you read the headlines today and you realize she was so ahead of her time, what do you think? Well, it's an awesome moment. Yes. An awesome moment, which no one in the family thought would ever happen. We had no idea what was going on behind the scenes. And the mere fact that her serving on the board and going in the community, meeting and greeting people, and meeting people that we never thought uh, knew that she met yes. Senator Kennedy and others, and getting many awards, you yes. know, for her thoughts and feelings, and to have the center named after her was such a mark. That's fantastic. Event for us. And your message today, because what's important is that the legacy lives on.
She saw a problem and she wasn't one to talk about it, but she was one to do something about it. She would notice that we needed health care and we had to travel from this area all the way to Jackson, which is located in North Miami. And she figured that that was just too far. So many babies were being born between here and the hospital. And we had to pass by James Archer Smith because we weren't able to receive any uh, services from that facility. So she saw that need and she wanted to do something about it. And she worked in order to bring local services to our neighborhood. And she was a very active lady involved with politics and, and um, the Democratic Party. Yes, she was, you know, and she was a very, you would see her every Sunday morning walking down that street with her daughter going to church. And also during that time, the village was raising the children. So I'm a product of some of her teachings in that she was a strong woman and whatever she believed in, she believed in with her whole heart. If she started a task, she was not gonna stop until it was finished. When I think of Ms. Eisen, I think of that mustard seed faith. No mountains to keep you from getting your vision in a successful manner. And not just for yourself, but for other people that you actually care for. People that she didn't even know.